So we're going to move out of proportion land. We're going to talk about mean land. You ready to go out of proportion land? So in proportion land, you know one thing. You know Z, right? Proportions all deal with Z. So if you hear about a proportion and you're testing a claim or you're doing a confidence interval about proportions, what are you going to use? All right. That's that Z table that we, we had, the standard normal curve. Now, in 8.4, well, we're not dealing with proportions anymore. It's going to be real similar to what we had in Chapter 7, where we have means, but we have two different scenarios. Either you know the standard deviation for the population, or you don't. So we're going to talk right now, testing a claim about a mean, when our sigma, or our standard deviation for the population, is no. Testing a claim about population mean where our sigma is known. <clears throat> well, we got a couple requirements. First thing we need, of course, is uh, what's, what's the first thing always that we've had the last, like, certain things? What type of sample? Random sample. In order to use this section, this is the big one really, you got to know this. You got to know that your sigma is known. Lastly, there was also a magic number that, that we used to deal with a, a z value. Magic number for our n. What's our n stand for? Sample size, good. It was number of trials or sample size for proportions, right? Here it's just sample size. Uh, what does n have to be? Greater than 30. So 31 or more. So greater than 30. Was that necessarily, did that necessarily have to be there no matter what? What was the other thing that we could have if n wasn't greater than 30? Yeah, or the population is normally distributed. This went back to the central limit theorem in chapter 6 where we learned about that stuff. Now, if we're not talking about proportions anymore, well, the method for hypothesis testing is still the same. Just like when you do a different experiment in science, you still have the same scientific method, right? That doesn't change. Same thing with the process for hypothesis testing. That, that's not going to change. What does change is your, your set of conditions for a scientific test, or in our case, our test statistic. That's the thing that changes here. So, of course, we, we can't have any p-hat, right? Explain to me why we can't have a p-hat here if we're talking about means. What's p-hat stand for? Proportion, right? So if we're not talking about proportions, you're not going to have a p-hat. What are we going to have if we're talking about means? What letters are we going to have? <laughs> we're going to have a mu. For sure. What's mu stand for? Mean. What type of mean? Population. Okay. What else are we going to have? X-bar. What's X-bar stand for? Yeah. That's going to be our evidence, right? That we're going to try to overturn a statement about mu with. So our H sub 0 is going to have a mu in there. Our sample is going to have an X-bar in there. We're going to compare those two things with a Z test statistic. Why can we use a Z test statistic again? Say, say that again? Sigma. Sure, we have sigma right in the formula. So our test statistic that we're going to use is the one we know and love or fear and dread, depending on whether you got it right or wrong the last test, right? It's, uh, it's this one. That's your sample mean. You're comparing it to a stated claim. That's your mu. It's something about a population parameter. And this gives the number of standard deviations away from the mean you have, where you have a sigma. Oh, that's why we got to know sigma to use a z value, because that's right, it's built into your formula. So if you didn't know this, you couldn't do this. If you didn't know this, what would you use? 
T. T, and there'd be a little s here. Right, it stands for the same thing, right? It's, well, not the same thing. It stands for standard deviation. It just depends on whether you're talking about a population or a, a sample. Over the square root of n. Now, i got to warn you, a lot of you on your last test had trouble doing this on a calculator. You plugged in the, all the numbers correctly. You had trouble doing, doing the math, right? When you're doing these problems, calculate your subtraction first. Write it down. Calculate this. Do sigma divided by the square root of n. Store that in your calculator. You can't round it. And then divide this by that. That's how you do this operation. Or, or if you if you really understand the math about this, you do this subtraction first, multiply by the square root of n, and then divide by your sigma. It's the same thing. Does that make sense? Flip, multiply. You got it. So I think I did that right. <laughs> Hang on. Let me make sure before I say something and then I'm wrong about it. As usual, I mean, you know, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, you, that, that's one other way you could do it. Just You can't divide and then divide. That would, that would make your z-score a, a lot larger uh, or a lot smaller, depending on what numbers you have there. You with me? Hope you're with me. Fancy math, fancy fractions, I know. The stats, why are we doing fractions in here? Uh, the other thing you got to know is that our steps are going to be identical to the last section, so I really don't have a lot of legwork to cover with you. That's why we spent so long in 8.2 getting all this done. All we have to do now is do a couple examples, illustrate for you that there's til still two ways to do this, p-value method or traditional. I'll show you both with this one example, and then we're, we're pretty much good to go. So let's try, let's try this example. We're talking about M&Ms. Do you guys like M&Ms? Do you know they're very specific on what an M&M is? An M&M for them has to be a piece of chocolate coated with candy that weighs 0.8635 grams. Did you know that? If they're less than that, they can't put the little M on it. They sell them in bulk to, I don't know, China or something? Uh, put a little lead in there just to pay them back for all the lead they give us. Up, give us. Forget those guys. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but anyway, they, they can't sell them as M&Ms. So I don't know what they do with them. They probably melt them down and make more M&Ms. So here's this guy's job. This guy's job is to sample M&Ms and what he does, he goes to the line and he'll pull off, you can, obviously you can't weigh every M&M. Do you know how many millions of M&Ms they make probably every second? You're not going to sample every one of those, right? It's, it's, it's impossible. So what they do is they, they pull out samples of them. They go, okay, here's 465 M&Ms. Let's weigh each of these individually and see if we're on the money. If we're not, well then we got to redo this one machine because they're making two small uh, small pieces of chocolate we want them bigger. Or if they're too big, uh, we, we want to make them smaller. Generally, they want to make them at least large enough, right? Because then people don't get mad. People are always okay if you're like, oh, hey, that's an M&M. Mm, not bad, right? But if you give them like, little bitty M&M, like, what the heck? I have like five M&Ms and they wouldn't they would be happy. So we're going to say that this guy is sampling, and you're the guy. 465 M&Ms. The sample had a mean of 0.8635, oh, you know what, that was a sample. I meant to say that the, the M&Ms are supposed to be 0.8535. Had a sample mean of 0.8635. Now, throughout the course of M&Ms production, they have a pretty good idea of what their standard deviation is. So right now we're going to say that the standard deviation for the population is 0 0.0565 grams. So they're assuming that that's their typical standard deviation for all M&Ms that are produced. That's the population right there. What we're going to do is test the claim 
that the mean weight is greater than point eight five three five. So they're giving away too much chocolate. We're going to test that claim. Claim. That's the requirement for labeling. If it's too big, they can't call it M&M. If it's too small, they can't call it M&M. Again, you're not going to see an M&M this big around, right? So you get your bag full of all these little ones, and then this big one that'd be kind of cool. Like, oh, I love this hockey puck of chocolate. I mean, that's fantastic. But it's, it's not going to happen, because they wouldn't call it M&M. So here's, here's the idea. Here's what's happening. You go, you sample your 465 M&Ms. You go and weigh them. He said, okay, the, the average, average weight for these guys is 0.8635 grams. You, you get the picture? So each one of those weighs 0.8635 grams. The st population standard deviation, this is what you're taking for granted here, is that you have 0 0.0565 grams in standard deviation. Test the claim that the mean weight is greater than 0.8535. Firstly, I want you to check requirements. We're going to assume that the sample is random. Secondly, do we have... Sigma anywhere? Where's it? What's it say for sigma? What's it, what's it say? How can you determine that you have sigma up here? Oh, that word right there, population. If that word was not here, look at the board real quick. If that word wasn't there, population segregation, could you use this? You couldn't use it. We'd be in the next section, not there yet. So of course we're using a Z. But if this was not there, you could not use a Z test statistic. Are you all very clear on that? That was the problem number, with chapter 7 as well. Same exact concept. Also, our, our third condition, is that met? Yes. Now, it doesn't say anything about the population being normally distributed, but does that matter? No. no what's our sample size? Way more. Way more than enough. That's perfect. So we have our, all our conditions met to use a Z test statistic. That's what you got to check. Because on your problem, on your test, I'm not going to say, this problem is from 8.4. And you go, oh, 8.4, that's a Z. No, no, no. It's just going to have this on the board, right? Just like that, with the problem right next to it that reads almost identical, except that that is a sample instead of a population. And you got to have a difference. And you're going to have, perhaps, a different outcome. <clears throat> so the, the, these people, they, they did the sample, and they're, they're trying to check if this machine is producing M&Ms that are too big. Because they don't want to give away too much chocolate. They want everything to be just precise so you get exactly what you expect in your bag of chocolate. Does that make sense? So we're, we're going to be precise on this thing and make sure that we are, are testing the claim that, well, that, that this thing's greater than that. Now, now here's the problem. Is this more than that? Yeah. Clearly, this particular sample has weights that are more than, than normal. Do you understand? However, what we're saying is maybe this happens because of random chance of sampling. Maybe you just happen to get all 465 M&Ms that were just slightly more than normal. You with me? So what we're, what we're doing by testing this with a significance level, uh, which I haven't given you yet, we're, we're testing this against a significance level to see that if that, that's rare enough to say this can't just be random chance, this is way too rare, this for sure we're, we're making a mistake on our, our production line. Do you guys see the difference in, in that? Sure, yeah, that's more. This is definitely more, but is it more is it enough more? Is it more than enough to say that this is rare enough to say that this claim is true, that we actually are producing m that are too big? How accurate do you want to be? you want to be 90%, 95%, or 99%? Seriously, you, you tell me. I'll have it written down so we can pick anything we want. 99? You'll be really sure. Okay. Fine, whatever. <laughs> so significance level. If she wants to be 99% sure, what's our significance level?
we're going to do our four steps right here, and I'll show you the difference between p-value and traditional, just like I normally do over on the right-hand side of the board. Now, step number one says, what are you supposed to do? Claim. Ah, claim and offset. Let's look at our claim. I want you right now in five seconds to state your claim. <coughs> state your claim. What letter do you use? Why not P? I did this on purpose to you. I gave you a number that's between 0 and 1 just to make sure you could still see the difference that even though this, this looks like it, it could potentially be a proportion, right, because it has a decimal number, does it have to be a proportion if it's a decimal? Mm -hmm. No, this is actually a mean. So we're, we're talking about mu. So the claim says that the mu is, let's see, test the claim that the, the mu is greater than, what, greater than, how do I, greater than, like this? No, what's wrong? Ah, that is greater than. Greater than how much? Good. Now state the opposite if you haven't done that already. Hey, critical thinking question right here. Would we be able to prove our claim correct in this case? It's right here. Right here. Which one is our h sub zero, the claim or the opposite? That makes this one h sub one. So the only thing you can prove right is h sub one. Do we have the potential for proving our claim correct? Yes, we do. If these were reversed, would I have the potential for proving my claim correct? No. At that point, you'd be like, well, why am I doing the problem? I can't even prove right. Oh, what's next? Say what? Isn't it identifying? Just yeah, it's basically doing this, just rewriting that, except you're going to have an equal sign somewhere instead of less than or equal to. It's kind of an important step, though. You, you do want to write that, trust me. It's one of those things where if you do it like I tell you, you're going to get right. If you don't do it like I tell you, you miss some steps, you're going to get wrong. Uh, so h sub 0, we're going to restate that. h sub 0 is this one. We're going to have mu, tell me the next thing. Good, that equality changes to a straight up equal sign so we can use that in our test statistic in just a moment. H sub 1, we never, ever change that. Step 3 is identifying your significance level. That's always going to be given to you. In our case, you already did it. It's 0 0.01. Step 4 is the only place you do math. That's it. Other, other than this, you're going to look up numbers in a table and compare them. So step 4, you're going to find your test Statistic. We're using a Z in this case because we know our sigma. So let's try to plug in numbers to our test statistic right here. Can you please tell me what is our X bar in this case? Read through real careful. What is our X bar in this problem? 8635 eight, eight, or 8535? Eight, 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 Why? Why is this our X bar? Aha, this is from the sample. So we write right here, 0 0.8635 minus, what are we subtracting? The mu. the mu. Where do we find the mu? Where do we find the, we're looking right here, right? We've done our x bar, we got it, 0.8635, that was our sample mean. We want to subtract our, our mu. What's our mu? Hey. Right there. Right, that's why we write it with the equal sign. Huh? Divided by, okay, divided by, what's our sigma? Zero, zero, Against this population? Divided by the square root of, the square root of your sample size. So 0 0.0565 square root of, how much of our sample size? Zero, Okay. Okay. 
I want you to do that on your own. You got to be able. To, I can't just tell you what the answer is. You got to be able to calculate that on your your calculator. So go for it. So 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.0565 times the square root of 465. Or you do this first and divide 0 0.01 by that. In either case, how much did you get? 3.81, how many people got 3.81 something? Okay, raise your hand. If you have a calculator, raise your hand. <coughs> if you have that on your screen, keep your hand up. Good, okay, that, that's great. Because those of you who don't have calculators, well, obviously, you, you, unless you're a math genius, which you could be, you're probably not going to be able to do that in your hand. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, I, between all my soapbox ranting, I, I forgot to, what did you say? 3.817, so since it's a z-score, because that's all you can look up your table, on your calculator would be more accurate, that'd be fine. For your table, 3.82. You okay so far? You sure? You sure? You okay Find the, te the test statistic, yes? Because this is, no matter what you do, you're going to get that. Now, here's where it changes from p-value tradi to traditional. I'm going to do this step by step and alternate between them so you see what you do different. <coughs> Pay close attention to the board right now, okay? First thing you got to tell me is, do we have a left tail, right tail, or two tail test? And how do you determine that from what? <coughs> a sub 1 says greater than, oh, that's pointing to the right. So I, I clearly have a right tail test. We're going to do the p-value first. P-value first. So you tell me if I say p-value test on your homework or on your test, can you tell me what goes here? Do I put 3.82 here or do I put 0 0.05 or 0 0.01 here? For a p-value, do I put 3 point? It's either one or the other. 3.82 or 0 0.01. Which one? Good, because right now I'm going to be putting my test statistic here and looking up the area in the tail. By the way, uh, can you tell me this also? Why don't I have a negative 3.82 over here? Ah, that's not two tails, so I don't need that. Why don't you go ahead and tell me what's the area that's associated with 3.82? How about, how about this better question? Tell me the area associated with the tail in 3.82. Is it 0.9999? So this is 99.9999? Oh, wait, wait. This is 0.9999. So this is 0 0.0001. Actually, it's smaller than that because it says anything over 3.5, use that. So on your calculator, it would be a little bit more accurate. But for us, on our tables, 0 0.0001. You put 0.9999, it's going to come out way wrong. You okay so far with that one? Now compare that to this over here. On our traditional method, you don't put 3.82 here, you actually put your alpha in the tail. Now am I going to put 0 0.01 or 0 0.005? 0 .0. When would I use 0 0.005? For a two tail, I have to split it. So 0 0.01, you're going to look up the critical value for that. I'm thinking it's, what is it, uh, 2.575? If you look at 0 0.01, you get that, right? Actually gives you negative 2.575. <coughs> but you know you're talking about a right tail test. And we know that's the fail to reject region. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, back to the p value. What is your p value here? The p value is the area in the tail. How much is the p value? How much is alpha for our, our problem? Do I use less than or equal to? 
you remember, you, you have to pick one of these. It's one of those two symbols. Do I use less than or equal to or greater than? Sure. Am I going to reject? This is where you've got to be good. Am I going to reject or fail to reject? Definitely reject. Look at this. This area is smaller than that, right? It's rare enough. It's saying you reject h of 0. Reject. Now, go back over here. Look at this one. You're going to use your test statistic for tra traditional method. Identify where your test statistic falls. Is it a fail to reject or the reject? Reject. 3.83 is way over here, isn't it? That's the rejection region. So you're going to, again, Three point eight three is over there. You're going to reject h from zero. So p value, you compare your p value to your alpha. You you're comparing areas. Traditional, you're comparing z scores. It's the same idea, just comparing two different things. In either case, uh, you tell me now. Do we have enough evidence to state our claim is true? Yes. It's either yes or no. Let's see what you did. Because some of you still aren't really kind of grasping this. Did you or did you not reject your null? So you come right up here, you say, which one you rejected? Which one did we reject? Did we reject this one? Did we reject this one? We rejected <coughs> this one. If you reject something, you crossed out the other one's true. Okay, that's what you do when you reject. So this one's true. Is our claim true? Uh, did you circle your claim? Did you reject the other one? So we just <coughs> proved our claim. So you're going to state right now, there is enough evidence to support the claim that, and then you restate your claim. So it's either there is or there is not. If you fail to reject, there's not. If you reject, there is enough evidence. So here there is enough, and then you're going to finish that off on your own. There is enough evidence to support the claim that the mean weight of M&Ms is greater than 0.8535 grams.